welcome back to the workshop guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Today I'm going to show you how to make a twisted flat back J hook. Uh, these are a great starter project for the beginner blacksmith and uh, great skills to improve your speed and efficiency in the forge. The only tools I need to make this little J hook are one pair of tongs, one hammer. I'm going to use my hook mandrel because I've got it. Or you could use the bick of the anvil and of course some ram bar to do the hook from. Okay, so my piece of steel is nice and warm. A couple of blows on the top. Oh, one blow on each side will be fine. Tile up yourselves. You don't want to do more than two blows, otherwise you'll be flattening that bar down too much. Now, let's force this down into a little square point, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flatten that off completely so that I end up with a chisel taper that's really fine on the end. So this time, I'm just going to completely flatten it all the way to the tip. There we go. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's needle fine on the end, but it's parallel in the other direction. Okay, so the next step in making this little hook is to form this little taper into this little snub end. And to do that, it's very similar to the S-hook that you might have seen in one of my previous videos. All I'm going to do is push it out over the edge and start that curve off and then turn it up the other way and close it up. Right then, so it's nice and warm. Out over the far edge, start that bend off. I don't want to do too much because I want it nice and tight. So the smaller amount, the better. That's the better. All right, and that's gone too cold for me. Joys of trying to do it on film. So back into the forge, back onto the anvil. I'm going to repeat this process. All of two seconds in the fire. Come on, roll up you little swine. Get it started. Curl it up. And when it's cold down, back in the forge. Get a nice one. Right, there we go. Let's do this. Okay, so I formed up my little snub end scroll. And the next stage in making this twisted uh, J hook is to form this twisted section. So I've used my chalk and I've put a mark 90 mil back from the far edge of my anvil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a heat, I'm going to hook my little scroll over the far edge, and I'm going to bring my hammer down, and I'm going to square up this little bit of stock just behind that white mark. Okay, so hook my little scroll on the anvil, and then I want to forge a little square section just here. It doesn't want to be too long, it doesn't want to be too big. That'll be just enough. All right, straighten it. If you bent it, which I have. Okay, so I've got my nice little forged flat section here, which is about two inches long or so, and that's ready to be twisted up. So in order to forge that twist, I need a pair of tongs. I need to be able to hold onto it really tightly and allow myself to twist that bar. So I'm going to warm up this little flat section that I made and going to quench off the bit that I don't want to change, grab it with my tongs, Give it a good twist, and hopefully we end up with something nice. So I want to grab that little scroll, and then twist my bar around. Nice and tight twist. It's only little. Let's knock off some of that scale so we can see what's going on. Go around one more time. There we go, happy days. There we are. So there's my nice little twist. And it seems a long way away from my little scroll, but by the time we've wrapped that around, it should be nice and close. So, taking out my fire nice and hot, cool off my little scroll, over to my hook mandrel. I can now hammer my little scroll because I've quenched it off, and I can pull my material around. Now, if you end up with a bit of a lazy bend in the back there, all you need to do is just give it a touch of the hammer and straighten it up. There we go. And there we have it. That's a twisted flat back hook. So I'm just going to nip this off using an angle grinder. You could use a hacksaw or a bandsaw. Um, you could even do it with a hot chisel. But I tend to make these in batches of 30 or 50. And then it makes more sense to use a cold cutting process. So I've got my hook nicely chopped off. What I need to do now 
just grab a hold of it, stick it back in the forge, and we're gonna forge a little splat on there so we've got somewhere to put either a nail or a screw through. Okay, so all I need to do is drop it down, hook facing down, bit too much material there, that's better. And I can do a little set down, and then I can angle my hammer slightly to spread that material where I need to go. And we end up with a nice little round splat on the top of our hooks. Now I need to make sure that that's sitting flat so it sits against the wall nicely. So there we go. But whatever you do, don't hammer on your little twist because you'll knock the corners off that little square section and you'll make that twist look a bit nasty. So all that needs now is to cool down a little hole through there and that should be good to go. Now one thing I can do while I'm waiting for this uh, hook to cool down ready to drill it is grab a wire brush and get rid of all that excess scale, give it a bit of a polish and tidy it up. And hopefully by the time I finish brushing it'll be cold enough to hold on to with my fingers. Try and get your centre punch mark in the middle. If you don't you can always walk the drill bit. So there's my finished J-hook, nicely done, nicely polished up, happy with that. Uh, great to be making these in batches of 30, 50, 100, it will really speed you up, get your hand-eye coordination in for your hammering and generally improve your skills. It's a really great first sort of project for, uh, for you beginner blacksmiths and they sell really well too, so that's always a bonus. Now I hope you found that interesting, remember to click subscribe and that notification tab as well and we'll see you here again in the workshop. Cheers guys.